Hello, hello, everybody. It's Nicole Steele. It's time to stamp. Let me refresh my page so I can pull it up. So if anyone's joining me, I can see your comments, your questions. Are you ready to stamp? Whether you're watching me live or in the replay. Let's see. All right, there we go. Okay. All right. All ready. How is everyone? All right. Well, I've got everybody home right now and we're all sharing bandwidth. So there is no time to chit chat. I need to get right to the stamping. So, but if, if you've never joined me before, this is Nicole Steele of the Joyful Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am so glad that you're joining me today, whether you are joining me live or watching the replay. I always upload these to YouTube and post them on my blog when I'm done. So, um, yeah, so I'm the owner behind the joyfulstamper.com. And today, every week on Tuesday at 2 p.m., I go live and I demonstrate two projects. And I actually forgot to pull those out. Here we go. This is what we're going to be making today. And this, thanks, comes from the Seriously the Best stamp set. And I absolutely love these fonts. They're so chunky and they have that calligraphy watercolored look. So I had a lot of fun playing with it this week. I made a bunch of cards with it. And hi, Jane. We are going to make these two cards today. And so like I said, let's get started because I don't know what my bandwidth is going to be like. Everybody's here working and doing online school. So we'll start with this one. And let me get my supplies out. All right, so specifically this is this flower comes from the Flowering Foils Designer Series paper, which is a celebration second release. And you can see I've already cut into it, but you get these three, or these four patterns actually, and you get three sheets of each of these. So there's the patterns, and they're really fun to color. So I have some samples too that I'll be showing you at the end. Oh, thank you, Jane. Glad you like them. This is a really fun paper to color and you can do it different ways. Today I'm going to use a sponge dauber to show you how to color these flowers here. And I also have a card sample that I've already done where I used Stampin' Blends on these. So let's jump right in. Let me get this out of the way. Okay, so actually I need that paper. Let me pull that back. Okay. There we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Rococo Rose cardstock, and I scored it down the middle at five and a half inches. Rococo Rose is one of our in colors, and it'll be sticking around until 2021. So even about another year and a half to play with it. Okay, then I have a piece of gray granite cardstock, and this one is at four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I used a new embossing folder. It'll be available on April 1st, and it's called the Ornate 3D Floral Embossing Folder. And it embosses really nice and deep. So um, last night I did a live where I showed a sneak peek of all these, these projects of the Ornate Garden Suite, and the folder was one of them that I showed, but I couldn't resist using it on this project today because it was so pretty and it fit it so well. So I'm using some liquid glue to go ahead and adhere that to my card base. Okay, and we've got that. And next I have some die cuts, which these also were die cut using some new um, dies that are coming out April 1st, and they are the Ornate Borders dies. I'm having trouble with my words today. Words are hard. <laughs> Sometimes. Maybe I've been talking too much. I don't know. My family's all home, so. And I can be quite the chatterbox. So I done cut these out, and I don't actually need the whole length of them. So I'm going to trim them down to the size that I want. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue them onto um, my, 
my uh, card here. So I'm just going to actually try and trim around these leaves just to get a little bit of a cleaner, a cleaner uh, break on it. So I've got that one and I'm going to have this one go almost all the way across. Almost. If you have any questions or comments or want to jump in with anything while I'm working, feel free because I'm checking the comments as I go along. So you can let me know. Um, are you staying home? Are you quarantining yourself? Or is it business as usual for you? Do you have kids home from school or grandkids? Husband's home from work. Are you home from work? Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put this one I'm actually going to have go all the way across. So I'm going to just lop this one off just like that. And some people might be tempted to save these. I'm not. Into the trash they go. Now I'm going to start working from the bottom up so that I make sure that I have space for everything. And I'm going to use fine tip glue pen. Mine has obviously seen better days. But it's still a quarter of the way full so it's good and you just put little dabs on it just like that and I'm just gonna go all around it making sure that I hit the larger spaces so that I know it's gonna stay put actually I'm gonna go this way okay and you can hold it down for a few seconds just to let it adhere or what you can do is put a block on it oh, look I moved it you can put a block on it and give it a little press, especially on a piece of cardstock that's been embossed where there's all those little nooks and crannies and dips and valleys. It may take a little bit for the glue to adhere. So, okay, and then I'm gonna put some more fine tip glue on this one. Okay. So I've had lots and lots of time to stamp, and the thing is I should be preparing taxes so I feel a little bit um, guilty that I'm not, but I still have until what, April 15th? So, and I, I heard a rumor they might extend it. I'm not really sure why they would extend that one though, because um, I've got, you know, it seems like we all have lots of time to do them now that we're home. But I'm procrastinating this year on doing them. Usually I like to get them done and out of the way, but... We didn't even get all our forms in time anyways. So, all right, and the last one, I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on this. Just dabbing it on. Okay. Now, if you had something called a Xyron machine, you could run it through that and it would put adhesive all over the piece and then you can just peel it off and stick it on like a sticker. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna make sure I cap this back up because this tends to dry out pretty fast if I don't put that cap back on. Okay, so I have those beautiful ornate border dies down there. I just, I love these. They're so pretty. Now I'm gonna show you how to color these flowers. And I'm gonna pull out my sponge daubers. And we are going to use Rococo Rose, wrong color, Rococo Rose and Bull Party. I like the way these two colors go together. They kind of remind me of like, you know, baby colors from a bridal shower or a baby shower, but they're so pretty. So I'm the sponge dauber. I'm just going to put it right on my fingertip and I'm going to pick a flower to color. Let's do this one here. And I'm just going to lightly tap that in my ink pad. Then I'm going to start with a very light hand in the center and just go in little circular motions, just like that. And as I go around the flower, it'll get lighter. The ink coverage will be lighter as I get to the edges, which is what I want. That's the look I want. Now, if you want more color in the center, you can tap it again and just go a little heavier in the center to add some color. But light circular motions, I found, is the key to getting the best look from this. Now I'm going to put another one on my finger, and I'm going to dab it in pool party ink, and I'm going to color the leaves. Now I know there's really no such thing as blue leaves in nature, but I'm stamping, 
So I will make the leaves whatever I want them to be. Now you see these little flowers right here. Originally I did color those with the sponge daubers and ink and I cut them out, but I found it too fussy. So I'm just gonna skip those for this one. Now the sponge daubers, you get these in a pack of five for five bucks. And so you could, they are affordable enough that you could dedicate one to each of the Stampin' Up! colors. I do not. I just have one that's for greens and one that's for blues and that's good enough for me. I always wipe it on scratch paper though before I go ahead and use it just to make sure I'm not going to get the wrong color. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and just fussy cut this out. Now these flowers are edged in foil, so it's really easy to follow the outline in this case. And some people find it relaxing to watch people color and fussy cut. <laughs> and I didn't bother to prep any of this ahead of time. So I hope you don't mind that we are doing this right now together. But you get to see the full creative process, right? What I'd like to do one day once I get more people watching Facebook Live is I think it would be fun to not have anything made and just ask for suggestions as I'm live and say, what stamp set do you want me to create with? What paper do you want me to use? And then just see what we can come, come, what we can come up with as we are live together. I always thought that'd be a fun challenge to do, which also could be a little scary because I don't know, sometimes it's hard to create on pressure. Okay, so I have this flower and I'm gonna stick it on there like that and I'm gonna use a Stampin' Dimensional. So my sheet's almost gone, but I'll tell you what, don't throw these out. Use your paper snips to snip around those border pieces and use every last bit of these dimensionals. They are precious. They are precious. Okay, peel that liner off. And we're gonna put it on just like this. Oh, that's looking really pretty. All right, now we're going to stamp our sentiment, which is coming from Seriously the Best. I'm going to get my embossing supplies out. Okay, so I'm going to use an embossing buddy to get the static off this piece of gray granite cardstock. And then I'm going to use a Versamark ink pad. And I was using this thing, so I'm going to stamp it and make sure it's okay. There's still a little blue on it. Let me clean it off here. Okay, so now I'm going to ink this up in Versamark, and I'm going to stamp this right on there like that. Okay, and now I'm going to take my white embossing powder and coat that stamped image with it, just like that. And we're going to use the heat gun. So here we go. go that melted beautifully beautifully and now I'm gonna do some more fussy cutting because if you can see on this card it just lends itself so nicely to be trimmed closely and it's got that nice thick font so um, it's easy to follow the outline of it and it's okay to leave a little halo around it or a cloud because it actually if you do that it will hide any uneven cutting that you do because a person looking at it's going to be looking at the actual sentiment itself not the cardstock that you've stamped it on so if you leave a little outline or a halo of that cardstock you stamped it on since per the person's not looking at that they're looking at the sentiment they will not notice if you happen to cut a little unevenly because there are cards to be made and projects to be done and there ain't no time to be trying to cut perfect. That is way too fussy for me. So there we go, just like that. That doesn't take very long, see? 
And then I am going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to get that on my card also. And waste not, want not. I'm clipping these little borders up and I'm going to use them on the back of that. They are just the right size because they're long and skinny. Just how I wish I was. I was I wish I was long and skinny. You know, I have three daughters and they're all tall and skinny. And they're beautiful. And I feel like I'm front standing next to them in pictures now because they're all so pretty. <laughs> so. But two of them are runners and one's a dancer. So they've got that build, you know. They're built like their dad, tall and thin, lean. So I'm using some linen thread to tie a bow now. There we go. And I'm going to use a glue dot to stick this on. Okay. And I think this actually needs to be rolled up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't want my glue dot to show behind the linen thread bow. The linen thread's a little bit skinny, so... All right, and I'm going to go ahead and put this on right there, just like that. And then I'm going to trim the tails. Now, a fun little thing, which I've shown before, is to take the bone folder and take the tail of your linen thread and hold down at the knot so it doesn't untie itself. And just pull, like how you curl ribbon for gift wrap. You can do that with the linen thread or any of Stampin' Up's twine, actually. And it just adds a fun little curled to it. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Sorry, I keep holding it up to show myself when you're the one that wants to be seeing it. All right, so that is the first card. Isn't that pretty how you can color? Use your sponge daubers to color those flowering foils. Um, the paper, I like that. There's so many options with that. I like that Stampin' Up! left it just white paper with the foil accents. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> There's a lot of activity going on in this house. You will hear people coming and going. All right, we're going to do card number two. This is the one I'm really nervous about because it's watercolor. And I've never watercolored on camera before, so, and I, I don't claim to be an expert. I like to do it, but I am not an expert. So let me clean up my space here, and we're going to see how it goes. But I have a backup piece that I made just in case, just in case this one doesn't turn out. But we're going to do this together. We are in this together. Hi, Lisa. Okay. My space is so crowded. I say that every time. Every time. Okay. Really, I'm getting cleaned up now. All right, I got all my pieces from my card, and we are starting with a four and a quarter by 11 inch piece of Pacific Point cardstock, and I scored it down the middle at five and a half inches. So that is the base of our card, and I haven't used this color in a super long time. Now this is another sheet of Flowering Foils Designer Series paper. I am not going to color this one. It's going to just merely act as a backdrop, but what I am going to do is take my bone folder and just slightly curl some of the edges here, just like that, the very, very corners of it. I just want to give it like a, like a sassy little flip on the card, you know? You know how like when you have long hair, you give it a little sassy toss? That's what my cardstock's doing. Okay, yes, I am, what is it called? Personifying my craft supplies. Okay, whoop. We don't want it off the card, we just want it slightly, slightly um, skewed, tilted, slanted. There we go. Okay, so I got that piece done. And then I am going to go ahead and watercolor this. So I'm using an aqua painter and I'm using Pacific Point and I'm going to get my stuff out of the way so I don't get anything wet that shouldn't be wet. Now some of our specialty designer series paper, and in this case the flowering foils pack that we're using, comes with this sturdy chipboard backing and it makes a really nice palette for water coloring. So I have a, was it three and three quarters by five inch piece of watercolor paper, fluid 100 watercolor paper. And I'm gonna give my ink pad a little squeeze, a little hug, and open it. 
and that squeeze puts some ink into the lid right there. And now this aqua painter, if you unscrew it, you can fill it with water. So you don't need a jar of water. You can certainly use it that way if you want to, because it has a brush tip, so you can dip it right in there if you want. But you can also fill up this barrel with water. And I'm gonna do a quick watercolor wash on this. And the trick to that is to, oh, there's still blue from my last project. Apply quite a bit of water to this. We really wanna saturate it, because once I drop that ink on there, I want the ink to freely flow. Okay, so now I'm going to drop some more water into the lid of my ink pad to dilute that ink. And that's when I'm going to start dropping it on here and just start adding color. Now, do you see how I that water that was already on my paper is moving the ink around for me? So I'm not getting harsh color lines where the ink pulls and sits. And you can just scribble. And that's what's so nice about this is you can't really mess this up. You can maybe not be happy with your finished look, but it's just a personal preference. It really doesn't matter. Now, the paper will tend to warp as you do this because of the water, so I like to bend it up and just move the water around here and there. And you can set it aside and let it air dry if you want. Or, since we have the heat tool handy, let's give it a little blast of heat here. Hi, Holly. Thanks for joining me, guys. I appreciate the support. <laughs> I'm not talking to myself. Although I'm very good at doing that, since I usually am home by myself during the day. I talk to Lily a lot, the dog. I probably shouldn't be saying these things on a live video. But goodness gracious, it's not like hundreds of people are watching it anyways. The Joyful Stamper isn't that famous yet. Okay, so I dried that a little bit and that's a little bit paler than I want. So I'm actually gonna go ahead in and add some more water. So I'm gonna squeeze more water on this and re-wet it. And I'm gonna add some more color. And just scribble, scribble, scribble. Remember all the fun that you had when you were in kindergarten, just scribbling with your art supplies? This is kind of like that again. Only now, it's much cooler. All right, and I'm gonna tip it around and go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna give it a shot of heat again. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. I so appreciate it. You know what, that reminds me actually seeing that Marilyn shared my video, which I deeply appreciate. Last week I had said that I would have a drawing for those that shared my video. So you hit the share button and then you type shared in the comments because Facebook doesn't let me see any other way that you shared it. I can see the number of shares, but not who shared it. So hit the share button, type shared in the comments, and I was doing a drawing for the well-dressed stamp set. Well, Marilyn, you were the winner. <laughs> so if you can, Either email me at Nicole at the joyful stamper com or private message me your address. I will get this in the mail to you. So that's a free celebration set. You want it. Next week's prize for sharing today's video is the metallic twine and sequins. This is sold out. You can't get this anymore. It's a celebration offering, but I have a package of it. So Hit the share button, type shared in the comments, and I will draw a name next Tuesday. So thank you. That helps me so much. I really appreciate it. Blot with another piece of paper. You have two. I have two what? Oh, oh, I get what you're saying. So instead of drying it, you're saying take another piece of paper and put it on top and blot it up. That's a really smart idea, idea Marilyn. Thank you. I didn't think of that. This is already mostly dry now, but I'll have to try that next time I, I watercolor. That's really smart. All right. Oh, I need my ink pad still. Pacific Point. And I'm going to take the thanks stamp from that Seriously the Best set, 
And I'm gonna use Pacific Points and I can actually move this chipboard away now. We don't need it, we're done watercoloring. And I'm gonna stamp off once on my scrap paper and then I'm gonna go ahead and go around my card here. Now, the paper is actually still a little bit damp, so it's slightly blurring the thanks, which actually, um, I didn't mean for it to do that because on my first card I had it dried all the way, but I actually kind of like that look. That is a happy accident. I love when that happens when I'm crafting and I have a happy accident. So that's that background. Now, since this isn't fully dry, I am gonna go ahead and use the one that I had already done. And that would be this one right here. And while I have the thanks out, I'm gonna go ahead and use my Versamark pad because I'm going to stamp it. Let me stamp it off a few times here. The unofficial way of cleaning it. And ink it up with Versamark. Oh, let me get my embossing buddy. Okay, and I'm gonna stamp that thanks, just like that right in the middle. We'll put some more white embossing powder on it. Thank you, Marilyn. <laughs> I was a little nervous watercoloring live because it's one of those things that I haven't quite perfected yet. I mean, there are some really good watercolor artists out there, and that would not be me. I'm just, I'm just a girl that just likes to stamp and, and play, so wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but I'm actually, I'm happy with it. All right, we're going to melt this embossing powder. This never gets old. Watching this powder melt, it is just, it's magic. There we go. Okay, I've got that, and I have that awful feeling again that I'm losing something here on my table. And I'm gonna fussy cut this out. I love this Pacific Point color. It's so bright, and it's a really good color for boys, like boy cards, boy birthday cards, that kind of thing. It's not a color I reach for all that much, but when I was stamping last week, I thought to myself, I need to start using colors that I haven't touched in a long time. And Rococo Rose and Pacific Point were the two colors that um, came to mind. Did you ever do that? Challenge yourself to do something that is not your usual style. My daughters and I went for, for a walk the other day, and we had that conversation about going out of your comfort zone. And it's kind of oxymoronic. Like, you're going out of your comfortable comfort zone, so it's not comfortable, right? But I like doing that. I really like doing that. I like stretching myself that way. So I used the Stitch So Sweetly dies in the mini catalog to die cut a Pacific Point piece of cardstock, and this is champagne foil. Now I know technically this foil is actually rose gold and silver, but I thought the champagne foil looked nice. Stampin' Up's really good at color coordination, but there still aren't any rules that say it has to be absolutely 100% matchy-matchy. So. I'm going with it. Okay, so I'm going to glue this piece down and I'm going to use, actually, I think tear and tape might be a good choice for this. It's watercolor paper, so it gets a little warped from the water and it curls. So this tear and tape will give it a nice strong adhesion. Okay. So has anybody been venturing out to restaurants and the like? I haven't gone to the grocery store, but I haven't needed to. I'm one of those people that like can scrape the bark off a tree and make a meal out of it. So <laughs> much to my family's dismay. <laughs> However, I am making buffalo chicken pizza for dinner because I know how to make pizza dough. All right. So we've got that background. Now I'm going to show you how to make a little um, thread nest. And that's another thing that it's like, oh, you don't even have to be good at it to do it because the messier it is, the better it looks. So I'm going to take some snail and I'm going to run a few lines of it in the middle of my cardstock just like that. And I'm going to grab this silver metallic twine. It's so thin and so fine. I don't even know if you can see it. 
but I'm gonna grab a bunch of it. And, oh, the restaurants are all closed in Vermont. Mm. Yeah, they're not closed here, but you're not allowed to go in and sit down. You have to, to do takeout. So, yeah, I don't know how this is all gonna play out, but I don't know. But Vermont, that's a pretty state. My brother and my sister-in-law got married up there in Stowe 15 years ago. And ironically, they wanted to get married there because of all the snow, and it was one of their warmest weekends ever. So it was just one big mud pit, but it was a beautiful wedding. <laughs> So you wrap it around your fingers and slip it off and then I it's in a circle right now I give it a little twist I give it a little twist and I stick it down right where I have that adhesive and you can spread it out However you want Make it as messy as you want. It's entirely up to you Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this piece down and I think I'm gonna use a piece of tear and tape for that, too. Just like that. Peel that off and I'll stick it down right over top of my thread nest there. Whoop. Okay, just like that. And then this one I can go ahead and I'm gonna use snail to adhere that one down. This is the champagne foil. And I'm gonna put that slightly off the edge of that Pacific Point piece, just like that. And then I'm going to use dimensionals to adhere that thanks. I'll snip a few of those off again and stick them down just like that. Oh, Stowe isn't far from you. Yeah, it was the Von Trapp Lodge. My sister-in-law really likes the sound of music, so she wanted to get married at the Von Trapp Lodge, and it was it was really pretty. I didn't, uh, I was too tired to enjoy much of it though because I was pregnant with my third, and my other two kids were four and two, so, and I was in the wedding, <laughs> but it was a really pretty area. Now I'm gonna take solid white. Whisper White Baker's Twine, and I'm gonna tie this in a bow also, and I'm gonna use a glue dot to adhere this. So let me make that bow a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I'll get a glue dot to put that on. Okay, and I'm gonna roll this glue dot up too because the twine is so skinny that I'm afraid it's gonna show. Okay, so I've got that on there. Squeeze it up some more. Stick that on and then I am going to trim the tails. Now this is another twine that you can do that curling trick with the bone folder also. Um, I don't know if I made my tails long enough to be able to do it, but we'll try it. Oh, it worked. Yes. Let me do this again. Oh yes. I just love that little bit of curl. Yeah. Okay. There is that card. So we've got those two cards and these two cards. And then I'll show you a third way that I colored the Flowering Foils Designer Series paper. So I have this one right here. And I took a five and a half by four inch piece of it and I used Stampin' Blends in a variety of colors. I used light and dark balmy blue light and dark smoky slate, light and dark daffodil delight, and light and dark calypso coral. And I first colored with my light stamp and blend marker, and then I went over with the dark one, and then I went over it again with the light one to blend the two colors so I could get various shades in there. And I just randomly colored the different petals in and completely covered the sheets. Oh, thanks, Jane, for sharing. I appreciate it. And... Um, this would be a really fun way to sit, you know, if you're watching all these TV shows, binge watching, get out your Stampin' Blends alcohol ink markers and just color a sheet of this flowering foils paper. You can also use your Stampin' Blends to color these flowers too on there. And they come in so many different Stampin' Up colors. And then I wanted, I stamped congrats from the same set, stamp set that I used that word thanks. I stamped it three times on basic gray cardstock and embossed it with white embossing powder and I cut that out. And I used clear faceted gems to highlight the centers of some of these colored flowers. 
And this ribbon, it's a Daffodil Delight. There's a Daffodil Delight ruched ribbon in the mini catalog. That is the same color. They're both Daffodil Delight and it would work. But I knew I wanted a big, bright, chubby ribbon on this card because I think this would make a good graduation card. I mean, that is coming up. So three ways to use the Flowering Foils Designer Series paper, three ways to color. Um, I want thank you so much for joining me today and for sharing the video. I'm actually going to be live tonight at eight o'clock because I'm calling it we're on a corona cation. So every night at eight o'clock this week, right here on my joyful stamper page, I'm going to go live and it's just gonna be fun. I'm gonna give away prizes. I have uh, my paper pumpkin kit coming today, so I will do a reveal of that and make some of the projects tonight. And that's tonight, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night. I would love it if you would join me. It's just going to be relaxed, casual, fun. And But if you do want to order, just go to my site, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net. Use this host code right here. And with a $15 order, I will send you my March class tutorial bundle. And it's the tutorials to the projects that we make in my in-person classes here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I would so appreciate that. Um, Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Yeah, I am totally addicted to fussy cutting these words. These are not the only cards that I have made using that. I'm the type of person that once I find something I like, I get really latched onto it and I use it over and over and over. And eventually I do get tired of it and move on. But the upside to that is I post all of it. So there's tons of ideas using the same set, same colors, that kind of thing. So but this is a really great font to be able to fussy cut around. It's easy, not very intricate. So, all right, guys, that's it for this afternoon. I got to return the bandwidth back to my family for school and work. But I really hope you'll join me tonight at 8 o'clock for my Corona Cation Special Edition Facebook Live. So I will see you guys later. Thank you so much. Bye.